the image of an expensive military helicopter being dismantled and buried in the red earth of Australia remains a visceral symbol of a procurement era defined by staggering costs and underwhelming results. For years, observers have noted billions of Australian dollars flowing offshore to purchase sophisticated hardware that, in many cases, struggled to adapt to the harsh, salt-heavy, and heat-drenched environments of the Australian continent. The burial of the MRH-90 Taipan fleet was not merely a disposal of faulty machinery. It represented the symbolic conclusion of a specific flawed approach to national security procurement. However, as the dust settles over those disposal pits, a new technological capability is emerging from the laboratories of Canberra and the testing ranges of the Outback. This development is fundamentally altering the paradigms of modern defense. The Apollo laser system, an Australian-designed innovation, is currently recalibrating global defense economics and restoring a sense of sovereign industrial capability to the nation. To understand the magnitude of the shift represented by Apollo, an analysis must first confront the scale of the institutional failures that preceded it. The Taipan program cost Australian citizens approximately three billion seven hundred million Australian dollars. When operational, the fleet required an estimated forty-eight thousand Australian dollars per flight hour to maintain, a figure that far exceeded original projections and placed an unsustainable burden on the national treasury. Yet despite this massive investment, the program was plagued by low availability, technical glitches and grave safety concerns, eventually leading to premature retirement and the controversial decision to bury the airframes. This instance served as a definitive example of the foreign off-the-shelf trap. Purchasing complex systems designed for different theaters and becoming tethered to overseas supply chains, restrictive intellectual property laws, and foreign technical support. It placed Australia in a position of strategic dependence, where premium prices were paid for equipment that could not be fully controlled, modified, or maintained without external authorization. The Apollo-directed energy weapon developed by Canberra-based electro-optic systems, offers a starkly different trajectory. In the theater of modern warfare, where swarms of cheap, disposable drones can overwhelm a multi-billion Australian dollar warship or a critical power station, the traditional mathematics of defense have become fundamentally broken. Currently, a military force might fire a surface-to-air missile costing between 500,000 and 2 million Australian dollars to intercept a drone that cost a mere 500 Australian dollars to manufacture. This represents an economic war of attrition that few nations can sustain in the long term. Apollo alters this equation entirely. The cost of a single shot from the Apollo laser is estimated at roughly 10 cents. While a conventional missile battery is strictly limited by the capacity of its magazine, often requiring a vulnerable and slow resupply process, the Apollo system possesses an infinite magazine, limited only by the continuous availability of electricity. The technical specifications of this Australian-made shield of light are world-class and represented a significant leap in applied physics. While many international competitors struggle to miniaturize high-power lasers, the Australian engineering team has managed to integrate a 150-kilowatt beam into a standard 20-foot shipping container. This power level is a critical threshold. It is the energy required to move beyond simply dazzling a drone's camera 
to physically melting internal circuitry and airframes in a matter of seconds. In rigorous testing conducted in the late months of 2025, the system demonstrated a 98% kill rate against complex synchronized drone swarms in the vast expanses of the Australian outback. Its mobility is perhaps its greatest strategic asset. The system can be mounted on a standard logistics truck or an Australian Bushmaster vehicle and deployed from a transport state to full combat readiness in less than 15 minutes. This is a ruggedized, combat-ready tool designed specifically for the vast distances and isolated, high-temperature environments of Northern Australia. Beyond the battlefield, the economic implications for the Australian workforce and the national economy are profound. Unlike previous big-ticket foreign purchases, and where the vast majority of economic value flowed out of the country to support overseas factories, the capital invested in Apollo remains within the Australian economy. It supports a high-tech ecosystem of engineers, physicists, optical specialists, and software developers located domestically. By fostering sovereign capability, the nation ensures that high-value intellectual property remains Australian-owned. This is a crucial distinction in the modern defense market. Most high-end American equipment is governed by the International Traffic in Arms Regulations, ITAR, meaning any modification, repair, or export requires explicit permission from the United States government. Apollo is non-ITAR. It is built from the ground up with Australian components and ingenuity, providing Canberra with the absolute freedom to export this technology to allies or modify it for specific environmental needs without seeking external approval. This autonomy represents a significant maturation of the Australian defense industry. The global market has responded to this Australian breakthrough with significant interest. In late 2025, Electro-Optic Systems secured an export contract worth 125 million Australian dollars to a North Atlantic Treaty Organization member in Europe. This was a watershed moment for the nation's trade balance in high technology. For decades, Australia functioned primarily as a customer in the global arms market. Currently, the nation is emerging as a provider of essential, high-demand technology. The intense interest from Europe, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East stems from a shared reality. The drone threat is democratic, low-cost, and ubiquitous. By exporting this technology, Australia is not merely generating revenue. It is engaging in defense diplomacy strengthening regional alliances by providing the tools necessary to protect critical civilian infrastructure, such as solar farms, airports, and water desalination facilities from low-cost aerial threats. For the Australian taxpayer, the shift toward directed energy weapons like Apollo represents a rare victory for fiscal responsibility. It moves national procurement away from prestige projects, large-scale assets that often become white elephants due to their inherent complexity, and toward practical, scalable, and affordable solutions. The 10-cent shot serves as a benchmark for a new era of defense spending, promising that borders and critical infrastructure can be protected without bankrupting future generations, as the year 2026 progresses, the strategic focus of the Australian Defence Force is increasingly centred on impactful projection and asymmetric denial. This strategy involves making it prohibitively expensive and risky for an adversary 
to approach Australian shores or interfere with national trade routes. Apollo achieves this goal by turning incoming swarms of expensive drones into scrap metal for the equivalent price of a cup of coffee. The transition from the Taipan graveyard to the Apollo light serves as a lesson in national resilience and a guide for future policymakers. It demonstrates that a reliance on foreign solutions often results in the inheritance of foreign limitations. Conversely, investment in domestic scientists and manufacturers yields solutions uniquely suited to the Australian environment and national budget. The Apollo system is currently under consideration for a wider rollout across northern Australia to provide a persistent layer of protection for the nation's northern approaches. It is a homegrown shield designed to ensure that the sky is no longer a source of vulnerability. With the implementation of the 10 cent laser beam, Australia is proving its ability to design and own the future of warfare, transforming historical procurement challenges into a testament to national innovation.